<laughs> Let me just start with the name. It's Deward. Like D O O Erd. Deward. So I want everyone to say it Deward. And you'll never again say Deward. Okay? <laughs> so I want to talk to you about James, uh, James Deward uh, Marshall. Um, please. I'm not an art historian, but I'm an art uh, collector. I've been uh, buying paintings for 35 years. And uh, for me, uh, part of the interest in uh, having a piece of art is also knowing the history of the piece, uh, understanding where it fits into the continuum of American art history, and knowing a little bit about the artist as well. Um, I recently uh, acquired uh, this painting by Deward Marshall, uh, because I c- also collect paintings from Neosho, and, and he had been on my hit list. I knew that there was this Deward Marshall connected with this town, and there wasn't much of his stuff available uh, in the art marketplace, but this popped up at an auction in Idaho, and so I, I immediately grabbed it, uh, which then uh, put me uh, in the process of starting to understand the history of this artist. Turns out no one's written on this guy, uh, so which made it particularly interesting to me. Uh, that, of course, at the top is the three-panel uh, Neosho Centennial uh, mural, um, which is uh, arguably the most important work of art connected with the city at this point. Uh, Deward Marshall painted that for the city. Uh, initially, the city fathers had gone to Thomas Hart Benton, uh, who, of course, is from this town, and had asked him to do the mural. He was involved in another project and said, you know, you probably should hire my student, Deward Marshall. Um, and so uh, the city hired him, gave him $500 to paint this mural. It was painted uh, at what used to be... I, when I lived here, it was called Neosho Hotel. I think there on the square, that five-story building on the square, it was painted in there. He had uh, gotten rooms set up there and it was installed in what we now call the Civic, but the library was part was in the Civic at, at one point. Um, and so it was in there, um, and then I understand it came to this building in 2007. Oops, wrong way. All right, so Deward Marshall's story really begins in a town that doesn't look too different from Neosho. Uh, I could fool you and say that that's the Neosho Square, but it's in fact Fayetteville. Uh, and so uh, Deward grows up in, in, in Fayetteville, uh, Arkansas, uh, kind of a checkered history. His, he was born in Springfield, Missouri. Um, his father dies when he's four years old. Um, and then so his mother, his widowed mother and, and one other s- sibling uh, moved back to where the family was from uh, in Fayetteville. And he grows up in, in this town of Fayetteville. The family was prosperous. Uh, they owned uh, this baking company. Uh, this is his uncle's baking company. Uh, and so the, the, his mother's people, the Shipley people, uh, were, were a prosperous uh, people. Um, but when they moved back into Fayetteville, uh, the, uh, uh, his widowed mother, he and his sister uh, lived in rented uh, spaces uh, on College Avenue uh, there in, in Fayetteville. She apparently was mentally ill uh, according to uh, family stories, I was able to uh, interview Deward's uh, son-in-law, who's an Episcopal priest in, in New Jersey, the only family that's left at, uh, at this point. And, and uh, so the, the mother actually dies in a, in a mental hospital uh, in uh, Little Rock. Uh, so uh, Deward is, is orphaned at the age of 19. He goes to Fayetteville High School, does very well. He's in the art club. He's in the drama league. Uh, He has the reputation as being the artistic uh, kid um, uh, in the school. He writes for the school newspaper. And so he seemed to have had uh, a healthy um, high school experience. Um, When he's 19 years old, uh, he he and his sister, Eileen, uh, petitioned the court uh, so that they could become uh, adults. Okay, they had to be 21 to be an adult. They were still minors, but essentially they were launched into, into the world uh, as orphans uh, responsible for their own lives. His sister, uh, Eileen, uh, and, uh, has a, uh, a career as a concert pianist herself. Um, after high school, uh, so he graduates high school in 1933. The Depression is on full tilt. Um, he goes to work um, 
in a, a, a federal works program. It was the program that, that existed before the WPA, the year before the WPA, and they hired artists to do things. Essentially, it was a, a way to, rather than paying people unemployment, they would, they would create jobs. Uh, and so uh, Deward uh, taught art classes uh, in Fayetteville for two years. So he's fresh out of high school. Uh, he's on the federal payroll uh, and he's teaching art classes uh, 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 in Fayetteville. He's teaching painting, he's teaching printmaking, he's teaching pottery as well. Um, I have a, a, a reprint of this article from Time Magazine. Those of you who are interested, I would encourage you to pick up a copy. Um, this article, which appeared in December of 1934, is uh, the 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 journalistic event that creates Thomas Hart Benton as a national figure. Um, Time Magazine uh, just had acquired uh, color technology and they wanted a special edition with color uh, prints inside of it. And so they wrote an article about this movement uh, of art that was going on in the United States. Uh, uh, painters interested in the American scene. Um, and they coin it regionalism. Okay, so this magazine creates this idea of, of American regionalism. It was really the work of a journalist. Uh, it's actually a very fine article. Uh, Benton gets stuck on the cover not because he's necessarily the most important figure in the movement, um, but, but uh, I, I recommend that uh, terrific article to you. Uh, Deward reads this article. Okay, so he's living in Bentonville. He sees this article, uh, and he knows that he wants to work with with Benton. Benton's living in New York City. I mean, we think of uh, Benton as being from uh, Neosho. Benton is very much not from Neosho. I mean, he, he grew up here, but uh, his, you know, his father worked in Washington, D.C. He very quickly went to New York City. He went to Paris, studied in Paris and in New York. He had been in New York working as a professional artist for 20 years at this point. Okay. Um, his career really takes off in 1930 with a series of murals that he does for the New School for Social Research, uh, which are now in the Metropolitan Museum. Um, and that series of murals are what create the vocabulary of 20th century mural design, which you, which we will, which you see in the mural out there. We'll talk about that in a minute. This here... Uh, is, is Benton with a student uh, in Kansas City. So in 1934, this appears. 1935, Benton says, I'm sick in New York. I'm getting out of here. I hate this place. Uh, I'm going back to Missouri. Uh, and he gets a contract to do the murals in, in the state capitol. Uh, that gives him the money to come back here. The, uh, the city fathers in Kansas City say, hey, why don't you come to Kansas City uh, and you can teach at the Kansas City Art Institute. Okay, Kansas City Art Institute... Uh, not a national institute, but they wanted to raise their reputation, and so uh, they hire uh, Thomas Hart Benton, who was a national-level artist, and bring him in uh, as, as their premier uh, painting teacher. That, that was in 1935 that he begins working uh, at the Kansas City Art Institute. Um, the following year, uh, Dewar does get a scholarship to go to the Kansas City Art Institute. Of course, you know, he's, he's an orphan, doesn't have family resources, can't afford the tuition. It's an expensive school uh, in an expensive neighborhood. This is the Country Club Plaza area. Uh, this uh, mansion is the school. It's, you know, it's a very short walk from the uh, Nelson Atkins uh, Museum. And so he goes there, and he ends up spending five years uh, there uh, on, on scholarship the whole time. As part of his scholarship uh, requirements, he's a teacher. And so he, he, he is Benton's assistant in the painting class, and he also teaches lithography, which is a, a printing method. Um, this is the triumvirate of the American regionalist movement, uh, on the left is Benton, in, in the middle is uh, Grant Wood, and this is John Stuart Curry. So you have Missouri, Iowa, and Kansas, these uh, three great American painters who were creating this uh, new modern style of American painting, um, and they knew each other. They, I mean, they were kind of buddies together. This is at Benton's house uh, in Kansas City. These are three paintings that you might know. Of course, the, f the one on the far left is, 
is American Gothic. Uh, that painting uh, by Grant Wood is the most recognizable American painting. Okay? More people can identify that. The only other painting that is more recognizable than that painting is the Mona Lisa. Okay? And if you haven't seen it's in, it's in Chicago. It's an amazing painting. Okay? It's caricatured uh, often, uh, but when you see it, it's, it's done in a, in a high Dutch master style. Uh, the technique is just unbelievable in this painting. Uh, uh, and it's comical, too. I mean, one of the things that you see about American regionalist art, particularly Benton, is they had a sense of humor. They had an appreciation for ordinary people, but uh, unlike uh, Soviet realism, you know, which always had peasants marching off gloriously into the sunset, the American version of native art was much more humorous, kind of down home. Um, John Stuart Curry, of course, is in this middle panel. Uh, this is in, in the, the Kansas State House. That's, that's uh, John Brown. Uh, and this is a self-portrait of, of uh, Tom Benton and his wife Rita uh, on Martha's Vineyard. So they, they spent all of their summers on Martha's Vineyard. Oops, wrong way. This is Deward Marshall in 1937. Okay, so he's a young art student. He's 5'4", 110 pounds. Uh, you know, uh, he he's grew up on an apple farm uh, outside of Fayetteville. He's an orphan at this point, and uh, this is a, a a study that was done by another student at the Kansas City uh, Art Institute. Uh, in 1937, he also meets Helen Mitchell, who is was is a, is from this town. Uh, her father was the dentist in town. Uh, a few years younger than Deward. She's also an art student at the Kansas City Art Institute. I don't know what happened, but all I know is they got married before their parents knew about it. Okay? And so in December uh, of 1937, they get married uh, at the courthouse in, in Kansas City, and the Neosho paper mentions this like a couple days later and says, oh, you know, Dr. Mitchell and his wife are going to go up to Kansas City to meet their new son-in-law. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, not exactly a shotgun wedding. What do you call that? Uh, an elopement? I'm not sure. Uh, the following year, 1938, uh, in the summer, Deward uh, comes down to Neosho. So his in-laws are here, uh, and he comes down with his wife. Uh, they live just a couple blocks off the square, and uh, Deward does a series of about 30 paintings uh, in the area. Uh, this painting is called Missouri Landscape, and he gets an exhibition uh, in the December of 38 at a gallery in Kansas City, Kansas, called uh, the Midwest Art Gallery. It's actually a very important gallery in, in the history of, of Midwestern art, uh, and they gave him a one-man show, um, and this, this is uh, one of the pieces. I mean, it's, it's this piece here. I mean, you can see it there. Um, it was this show, uh, and, and this was a gallery that also showed John Stuart Curry and, and Tom Benton uh, and Grant Wood. So they, it, it's a professional gallery. It's not a student gallery. Um, and and uh, it's uh, based on uh, this painting and this show that Tom Benton recommends Deward Marshall as uh, the person who should take the commission for the Neo Show um, mural. Here you see him working on the mural. This is uh, from the Joplin Globe. Um, he's an artist, so he's got a pipe in his mouth. Okay. Um, and here he is. So apparently, and it was in, in the hotel where he, he's, he's doing the work. Uh, the work was executed in, in, in the course of about a month, uh, done, done here in town. Um, and here, in, you, can see the, you can see the similarity in, in his vocabulary here. First of all, to take a look at how he structures the limbs on the trees. I don't know where he got that. It almost looks Chinesey how he bends those things. Um, and then he frames the scene in, in, in the landscape. There's nothing really in here. I mean, there's a house or two. But uh, in, in the mural, he uses the trees just as, as a kind of cinematic frame. That's going to go on. Okay? So you could imagine him then you know, later constructing a painting where he's got something going on in here. Um, you also see that in the mural, he, he, he simplified it because of the scale. 
Okay, so one of the things that a mural has to do is that you've got to be able to read it at a distance, uh, whereas this is a, you know, this is a more intimate, uh, intimate uh, picture that you would have on your wall, but, the, but the, all the hallmarks are there. Um, just in terms of what's going on here, so again, I mean, we just take this for granted that this is how murals uh, operate. Uh, people have always painted on walls since we lived in caves, so painting on a wall is not the new thing. But one of the things that Tom Benton did, uh, and maybe this is because of his contact with Hollywood, maybe it's because of just where he was in, in terms of time, is, is that he uses a cinematic method where you have the same frame, but you're telling the story in the passage of time. So over here we have you know, the Osage Indians and then the coming of the European settlers, and then you've got you know, lead mining going on up there. Uh, and then you have the Civil War conflict here. Um, in this middle panel, this is his wife. Okay, so she was the model for that. This African-American fellow here, uh, Kay Hively, says that it's uh, uh, George Washington Carver. Uh, when this was painted, people didn't say that. So whether or not that's a, a correct attribution or not, I don't know. It sort of looks like uh, George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver would have been 79 years old when this was painted, and he lived down in where? Uh, Tuskegee? Was that, what state's that in? Alabama, Georgia, someplace down there? And he's smoking a pipe, and, and you know, Carver never smoked. Okay? He was a clean-living man. So, so maybe it's him, maybe it's not. This here is uh, Tom Benton's father, the lawmaker, uh, you know, you got your World War I doughboy and then the young children uh, of the future. All of the, all of the figures there are otherwise known who the models are. So that's, oh, and I guess you know, you see the hole that's up there. Um, when it was in, in, the, in the Civic, they, I don't know, they needed to put a vent fan in, so they just cut a piece of the mural out. They kept it, but this is part of the reason it needs a restoration. Oops, wrong way. So uh, in 1940, uh, Deward Marshall goes out to Colorado Springs. This is the Colorado Springs Arts Center, which is now part of Colorado College, and he begins to study there as well. So he's, he's had five years with Benton uh, in Kansas City. He's continuing his studies um, uh, in Colorado, uh, and he's studying with a fellow by the name of Boardman Robinson. Uh, Boardman, this is a mural by Boardman Robinson uh, from Pittsburgh. Uh, the same kind of heroic uh, mural that, you've, you know, that you would find in the WPA. Um, this, this is a Benton, 1921 Benton painting, and that's Boardman Robinson. The center figure is Boardman Robinson. So Boardman Robinson and Benton were friends in New York City. They both uh, taught together at the Art Students League in New York. They were both uh, you know, kind of leftist in their politics. I think uh, Robinson was a little more left than Benton was, but they were certainly left of center, and they had all of that in common. And so uh, Deward continues his studies uh, with Boardman Robinson out in Colorado. Uh, 1940 um, <clears throat> was this tremendously productive period uh, in uh, Marshall's uh, uh, life. He's still in school. Uh, he's still in Kansas City, but he's going back and forth between Kansas City and Colorado. Uh, he has 11 exhibitions in one year, which I, I'm not even sure how you put, put, put all of that together. So he's tremendously uh, busy. This is a, a lithograph of Kansas City, like the outlying area of Kansas City. Kansas City's in the background, and I think he's just kind of commenting on the, the nearness of the rural life. Now, this, this painting here, which is right here, and I want you to make sure that you come and look at it. This is called Colorado Landscape. This is painted in 1940. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's 81 years old, this painting now. Um, he paints it while he's with Boardman Robinson out in Colorado. This wins uh, uh, Marshall's first important prize. It's called the Kansas City Sweepstakes uh, in 1940. Um, and this was the, the, the painting that... I was so eager t to find and, you know, and, and, 
we sent you looking around for that thing. It's like, where was it? It wasn't where it was supposed to be. And we're like, uh, worried. What happened to this darn thing? Uh, we had record of it being, this painting was given to the Longwell Museum uh, by Marshall in 1982. Uh, it had exhibited a number of times, and I had record of, of it being exhibited. And fortunately, Mr. Novak was able to turn it up in the archives, and, and we, have it, we, we have it brought out here. And so I'm really happy uh, to be able to see that important painting here. Um, what's going on in that painting? Uh, let me go back again. So th- what's happening here is, is that this is being, he's first drawing with a pen, pen and ink, uh, and, he, and it's on paper, and then later he's going in and he's, uh, and he's washing in the, the colors with watercolor. Okay? Um, this is actually a technique that Benton used a lot. Okay? It's called an ink wash. Uh, and so he would go out sketching with his students. And so on the left is a Benton. On the right is a Marshall. Okay? Same technique. Uh, a quick sketch in the ink to lay out the figures. And then uh, we'll put a little bit of color in there. Okay? A 1940, he's also involved in lithography. Um, a, lo- a lot going on. So this is uh, 1941. After, after 1940... Uh, in 1941, Benton gets fired by the Kansas City Art Institute. He just ran his mouth off one too many times. Made he made enemies of the people he shouldn't made enemies with. Okay, uh, you can insult a lot of people as an artist, but you don't insult the board of trustees of the school that's hiring you. Okay, which is what he did. And so he gets fired uh, unceremoniously. And Marshall has been with him for five years. And so then after this, Marshall then comes back to uh, Fayetteville and he enrolls at the university of Arkansas, uh, hoping for uh, a teaching degree so that he can, uh, have an assured income. I mean, first of all, you got to think about what it means to be an artist working in 1940 in, in the Midwest, you know, what are the career prospects? I mean, these are not the normal things that your parents are telling you to do. I want you to go study with Mr. Novak so you can, you know, have a, a prosperous career in Arkansas in 1940. This is, so he, the backup plan was to, be, to become a, an art teacher. He has a, a big one-man show uh, at the Union there. I think some of the paintings from that show are in the University of Arkansas. Uh, this is probably the largest piece that was ever written on uh, Marshall. This is in 1941, the following year. Marguerite Gilstrap, a very, very good journalist uh, from Arkansas, uh, wrote a very uh, sensitive piece about uh, Marshall. But I think part of what you see here is, is a recognition of a local man. So he, he had studied out of the region and had come back into the region and the folks in northwest Arkansas are like, hey, this is our local boy, and we like what, we like what he's doing. But then the war happened. Okay, Pearl Harbor, 1941, 1942, the enlistments begin. Marshall's uh, career is interrupted by the war. He ends up going to work in Washington, D.C. Believe it or not, they used to use uh, artists to do camouflage. Okay, Benton painted camouflage. That, and apparently he learned a lot about how to paint by painting camouflage. Uh, and so uh, Marshall goes to Washington to work for the war effort. Later he gets a transfer to Camp Crowder. And so then he then comes with his wife and they, they live back in Neosho again. And so he spent the, the, the remainder <coughs> of his military career at Camp Crowder. Um, after the war is over, this is a 1945 lithograph. Uh, he's back in, in Colorado again. Uh, with Boardman Robinson, and he's doing like extremely fine. This is a, lith- a lithograph, um, and I don't know if you've ever seen a lithograph. Is is a kind of print that you do. You draw with a crayon on a very smooth stone, and then you 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 apply a piece of paper to it and, and roll it. And uh, but but the 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 fineness of this is is very unusual for for a lithograph. But this uh, this one was purchased by. Um, the Library of Congress, there's, there's an annual um, print competition uh, that the Library of Congress sponsors. It's called the Pinnell uh, Award. And so Marshall enters that, and this then was purchased by the Library of Congress. Every once in a while, uh, this will show up in the market, the, uh, the other copies of it. This is a ni- another 1945. This is a more typical lithograph. Uh, 
but you see very much his WPA influence here. Uh, the problem is, is that by 1945, WPA is now looking stale and old. Uh, again, a very WPA kind of workers, socialist feel to this. This is called going home. Um, 19, this is 1946. He's still in Colorado. I don't know. I don't know where that scene is. My guess is that's not a Colorado scene. Um, and then in 1947, something begins to change. This, I think, is a very important painting. Uh, it's called uh, Red's Coup. Um, when Marshall was in high school, he wrote his senior thesis on communism in Russia. And he seemed to have been fascinated by uh, communism. And certainly he studied with two very uh, uh, pink teachers. Um, in 1947, of course, the World War I is over and we're settling into the Cold War. And one of the things that's happening and is surprising uh, uh, the West is that, oh, Russia, they're not just content to stay inside of Russia. Okay? And they begin to precipitate coup d'etats in Hungary and in Czechoslovakia. And so this is a, 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 a Denver Post uh, front page from 1947 uh, referring to a coup d'etat that the Reds had precipitated in Hungary. So this is the beginning of the Cold War, and which was two things. One is the continuing threat between West and East, but also for those who were very left in their politics, a beginning to have a disillusionment uh, with the Soviet Union, that maybe the Soviet Union isn't quite so benign as we thought that it was going to be. Oops. So this painting... Um, yeah, so he put, does that in forty-seven. but let's talk about what's happening... Uh, elsewhere in 1947. So this is also a 1947 painting. Um, this is uh, Jackson Pollock, of course. Um, this is not a drip painting. This is what's called a pour painting. So he's not yet to the drip style. Um, but this is what's going on in New York. Uh, very different from something like this. And so what's happened is, is that not only has Marshall's career been interrupted by the war, but there's been a rise of a new style. It's called abstract expressionism. And the art world has just gone in a, in a different direction. Um, I assume you all know that, uh, that Jackson Pollock was a student of Thomas Hart Benton. And here you very much see the influence. So this is, this is, rel this is 1934. Uh, this is the, the painting that, um, it's, I think it's called Mural, that... Um, uh, Peggy Guggenheim bought uh, from Jackson Pollock, and that made his career. But you, but you know, if you were drunk and you looked at uh, a Benton, it might look like this. Okay, like you see, you, you see the forms in there, and you see the kind of the the, the dynamism of the painting. Um, but that's what's going on uh, in New York. What happens in the '40s and then into the '50s? is that painting uh, goes flat. Okay, so on this side we have Benton. This is a piece of the mural uh, in, in the uh, Missouri State House. And w Benton is creating an illusion of three-dimensional space. Apparently for people, the, like the, the, the lawmakers who ha had to play cards in this room said they were, they were getting sick because it felt like the figures were jumping off the walls. Okay, and I don't know if you've been up close to a Benton painting, but like I, you, you get a little queasy because there's like so much going on there and things are like lurching out at you as opposed to a Rothko on this side, which is like all surface and very serene. Okay? And so if you're doing this kind of art in this kind of art market, well, that's a problem. This is a 1948 uh, uh, lithograph. I don't know. I'm going to let you try to interpret it. It's called uh, Red Dust Storm. It's got political content in there. This guy's swimming in the street with papers, and I don't know, people are drowning. I'm not sure what that's about. Um, this uh, was uh, Marshall's entry into... Uh, a very important show in Colorado called 15 Colorado Artists. It's 1948. If you were from Colorado and you were interested in the art world, this is the most important show. Okay? The 1948 15 Colorado Artists show was the introduction of modernism to, to what had just been a cow town. 
Um, and so, and Marshall is part of this uh, modernist movement um, in, in, in Denver there. Okay, so here he is, young man. He's living in Denver. He's finish, he finishes his degree at Colorado College in 45. He begins working on his master's degree uh, at uh, Denver Uni- University of Denver, and he's teaching on the faculty there. He's teaching art. Uh, he finishes his master's degree in 1951. Uh, I've read that. It's a fascinating little piece. It's about uh, how I train uh, an art student by just giving them flashes on the screen very briefly of an image. They, they get one second, and then they have to draw it. So he's got a whole kind of technique there. This is, uh, after he finishes his master's degree, he then goes to work uh, at Texas Wesleyan University, and he becomes the director of a children's art museum. Uh, and his career fizzles. He's out of step with the time. Productivity goes down. And so he goes to Germany. Uh, and he goes to work for the Occupation Army. The U.S. Army is occupying Germany at this time. And he, he teaches art to GIs in Germany. He's there uh, for uh, about five or six years. This is one of the paintings he does in Europe. It's, it's strange, strange colors. Maybe you think it's, it's kind of surrealist uh, Hyperrealist. I don't know what's going on with this painting. Um, it's called it's called Spanish Harbor. Uh, this is a, a block print. You see it over there. This is also done from that period. This block print does show in New York uh, in '56. Uh, but you see, you know, he's trying to do cubism here or something. But cubism's even outdated at that time. But it's a self-portrait. You see him up there with his signature uh, black rim glasses. But then in the glasses, you see uh, images from the city of, of Munich, both uh, the city hall and, and, the, and the Munster there in Munich. What brings him back to the United States is Thomas Hart Benton. So in 1959 and 1960, Benton uh, is working on the independence and the opening of the West Mural at uh, the Truman Library up in Independence. That's Truman up there, of course, o- looking at the, the cartoon that... Uh, Benton has. Benton's an old man. Okay, he's, his heart's kind of given out. Uh, he's, not, he's not been teaching. Uh, and so he calls up Deward Marshall, and that's him down here. And it's Deward Marshall who works from the drawings that Benton has made and lines them out on the, on the wall. You and I went to see that mural. Okay, it's, it's, a, big, it's a big area. And so they got, he got a younger man to go up there and draw the lines and then fill in the cartoon and then... Uh, Benton would go back in there with his tempera and then and then paint the paint the thing. So uh, there is a video that that's a, a, a snap from a video that is online of of Deward Marshall <laughs> drawing that stuff out. It's it's fascinating to watch. Um, he ends up living in Kansas City. Uh, this is the house where he lives, uh, and he settles into a life of an art restorer and an art framer. Uh, his father and his grandfather were both. Um, blacksmiths and he seemed to have been the kind of guy who could fix or make anything and so people would bring him weird pieces of art that needed repair and and he had a little shop out back and he would paint upstairs himself uh and he lived he lived out his days in in this house here here he is in the in the 1970s working on something that somebody gave him to work on he's not exhibiting during this period this is a this is a block print a colored block print uh, Brother Dave, who do you think that is? My best guess would be um, Richie Scheinblum, but I don't. I, I think it's too late for Richie Scheinblum. Or too early for Richie Scheinblum. Richie Scheinblum. So we were trying to figure out which player this is, but apparently Deward liked to go to the ball games, uh, and so he's making this rather kind of conventional art in the 1970s. This is maybe 1970, maybe 1972. It's it's undated. He's doing this kind of stuff. I mean, this, this just looks like Thomas Hart Benton, uh, but rather conventional, painting for himself, not really showing. Uh, I like this painting. This, this is actually a, a, a design painting for a movie set uh, for Tess of Duberville. Uh, and I just think it's a terrific painting, although it wasn't, it wasn't intended to be shown, but it was just something that he had created for someone who was doing some set design. Um, 
this is this is very late, probably 90s, uh, very conventional. Uh, this is a lithograph, or or, or maybe it's a woodcut. Um, you see that you see the number of prints here. So there's like 350, which is like almost unimaginable on most prints. Uh, you know, almost commercial production here. I, I don't know if he's he's. You know, so this is uh, old Matt's uh, cabin, which is part of that. What's that story? The Shepherd of the Hills. You know, down there in uh, uh, Branson. Okay, so maybe he's selling them in some shop down in Branson or something like that. But again, very conventional. Um, after his career, I mean, in a sense, his career st- stalls uh, in 1950. Um, later in, in life, he does, have, he does appear in two retrospective shows. There was an important show up in St. Joe, Missouri, called Under the Influence, the Students of Thomas Hart Benton. It was a very large retrospective of of a group of people, they call them the Bentonites. They're all, there were like a lot of students of Benton in Kansas City. They stuck around, they painted. Most of them looked like imitation Bentons. Uh, and so they pulled together a show of, of these people in, in, uh, 80, in 93. And uh, there, the catalog for that show is on that table. You can take a peek at it over there. Um, and, and Marshall is represented uh, in that show. <coughs> and then... There was an important show uh, in 2011 at the Vance Kirkland Museum in Denver, which was an attempt to recreate uh, this 15 Colorado artist show. They were going to try to reassemble all the paintings, but they weren't able to do that. (coughs) And so he shows up there um, uh, at that point. So uh, Marshall's work uh, is not in a lot of places. (coughs) Um, City, county... Library, okay, that, that mural out there. I hope you all have gone to see the, the 30-foot mural that's in that next room over there. Uh, we were just over there, and we discovered that there's another Marshall painting over there, which is this one here. It's a 1970 watercolor. Um, the Longwell Museum uh, has this piece, this uh, Colorado landscape, and there's a very important handmade book back there. Uh, it's called My Road, um, and uh, it's... He wrote the text to it. Uh, he didn't letter it, but he did lithographs for it. Uh, and so they have that. Um, and there's a couple of other... Uh, they've got the, some kind of banner or something. Did you ever see, see what that banner was that was mentioned there? There's something else that's, that's a banner that he made uh, for the Benton Centennial uh, exhibition here. The Wolfsonian, which is a very odd museum down in, in Miami, has got six of his prints the accession dates are important to notice because you see that uh, museums are only beginning to uh, acquire him later. I think what's happened is, is that Benton and his school like really go out of style. Like People hate Benton in the 50s. They hate him in the 60s. They hate him in the 70s. Uh, in the 80s, maybe they're willing to reconsider. In the 90s, oh, actually maybe we will hang one of his works in our museum. Okay? And so there's been, there's been a... a, a a, a regathering of support for Benton, and as a result of that, people are beginning to look at the people that Benton had influence on, which is why you're seeing museums begin to acquire. Um, the Albrecht Kemper Museum uh, acquired one piece in 93. The National Art Gallery acquired two pieces in 08. And the Kirkland Museum, which uh, has probably the best and most representative collection, um, although we have more gathered here today than even they have, um, <laughs> You see the dates there, 09, 11, 12. They, they, there's this recognition that, well, maybe we should, should be picking up pieces uh, uh, by this guy. Which brings us back to where we started. Um, he's only 25 years old when he paints this. I mean, he's just a kid. Uh, unformed, ambitious, uh, grew up in the Ozarks, uh, and is tapped to uh, do a, a public commission um, by a national level teacher that he has. And he does a good job. I mean, if you take a look at the mural, that, that's, that's a good mural. Uh, and that mural needs to be taken care of and, and put back into, uh, into proper order. Uh, the, the Neosho Arts Council is raising money uh, for the conservation and restoration of several murals around town, this one uh, as well. Um, and 
the, the, the painting is, you know, it's pushing 100 years old at this point. It's, it's lived well. Uh, they can last a long time with a little bit of a tender, loving care. Uh, and I think it's going to be terrific as, as people in this town step up and, and put forward the money that, that's needed to, to make that possible. And that's all I got. 